Hello, I'm Rob Hasty, Artistic Director of Sheffield Theatres. In 2019, we opened a new space just across the way in Tudor Square, the bank, dedicated to developing and championing emerging talent from Sheffield and across South Yorkshire. It's home to a cohort of 14 supported artists who receive mentorship, funding and space and make a major contribution to the creative life of these theatres. Throughout lockdown, the bank has remained open in spirit and we've stayed connected to our local artistic community through online workshops, training and creative exchanges. And through our Free Cheers for Sheffield programme, we've showcased some of the amazing work that's gone into past productions and talked to some of the artists, writers, directors and actors who've made those productions. From our supported artists, we commissioned six new experimental pieces of work in whatever form and on whatever subject they chose. The short films you're about to see are the results of that open brief. They constitute the work of 35 freelance artists, writers, directors, producers, actors, filmmakers, interpreters. They're all filmed within the last few days and recorded using government health guidelines. There is some strong language. I want to thank all of our artists our dedicated donors for their continued support and generosity, and you, our audiences, for sticking with us. Enjoy the films. What is it, ghastly? They didn't say. Rhiannon, if it's gas, we need to be further away. They didn't say it was gas. What do they say? Leave. If they wanted us to leave, they shouldn't have barricaded the street. Do you think the neighbours know what's happening? I'm not asking. It's about the snow shoveling. Just for tonight, maybe pick your battles. I've got decision fatigue. You go investigate. I'll just assume it's the end of the world. I thought I heard thunder an hour ago. The sky is totally clear. The stars look different. Weird. You were awake an hour ago. Even after we... I was out like a light. I noticed. Ah, so that's why you're being... Nope, nothing. You're not being... anything. I was just awake, Joel. And now there's this. Do you want to... end things? Let's just hang back from the neighbours and everything. Why do they think yelling's helpful? Entitled pricks. Yowza. Yeah, so you're on the man's side? I'm sure the man loves being up at two in the morning being yelled at by self-righteous suburbanites. And they started it. Bins. Parking. The snow shoveling. No comment. Where's your blitz spirit, young lady? Life must be so tough for them. Everything's so outrageous. I am... Um, out with the rage. My rage is off on an outing. <sighs> <laughs> Shit. The ones in uniforms have got guns. Whoa. Neighbours are still kicking off. Should we be scared? Woman in the good suit looks in charge. What's she saying? Can't hear. There's something in the houses? Not ominous at all. Anything from Tash? Nothing from anyone. Can you hear sirens? Yeah. I'm sure Tash is fine. Nothing. No signal or 4G. So either they're blocking it... Or something's happening everywhere. Oh, shit's getting real. What's shouting man from number three's problem? 
wants to go back to bed. It's the world's ending. I kind of see his point. Guards aren't stopping him. What if there really is something in the houses? Do you think they're lying? Lights have gone off. It could just mean he's gone back to sleep. That's someone in the window. Where? Um, not his window, but yours. I can't see anything. OK, let's talk. Uh, well, um, <clears throat> OK. OK, you and me, it was... OK. Oh, God. Is that what you're worried about? What if things get weird? You fell asleep in my bed. So what? Shares a wall with mine. It's not like I'm suggesting we knock through. <laughs> yep, made it weird. Well, plenty of that going round. You're not going to give us a chance, are you? We only get together when Tash is away. I'm picking my battles. Have you not noticed how often Tash is away lately? She stays at her mum's on purpose. Dingba. Oh. It's not up to Tash, though. No. You either take everything further or just end everything now. It's, that's up to you. Oh, come on, Joel. Big picture. Giving us a chance assumes any of us have got one tonight. Something in the houses, remember. A nice subject change. You think things here are that bad? Haven't you felt something bad coming for a long time? No. No, I've been feeling good about things of late. Hopeful, almost. It's not about you, Joel. It's how I feel. Everything is just futile. Um, I'm uh, sorry. I... Hug it out. Mob's kicking off again. Well, if something doesn't work, rinse, repeat. Guards aren't doing anything. Don't seem to care as long as we don't leave the street. Neighbours are all amateur stargazers all of a sudden. Now the guards are doing something. They're checking the watches. Turning away. Shit! When did all the front doors open? Hey, where are they going? Hey! Hey, get away from our house! They're going inside! I don't think it matters, Joel. Yeah! Right. Big picture. I don't matter. Okay, our nights together don't matter. They're just all so insignificant on a cosmic scale. Is that why it's just you and me now? Huh. The stars do look different. Weird. Joel. Don't go with them! Joel! Please!
You're not Joel. Give him back! Okay. I'll get out. since primary school. Oh, no, I guess. Oh, you should always wear it like that. It really Definitely. suits you way more as an adult. <laughs> Head's grown into it. Mm. I'll take the compliment. You look great. <laughs> it's so good to see you. Yeah, finally. In actual <laughs> IRL. Yeah. I'm so sick of screens. Yes, me too. Oh, I'm dying to give you a hug. Yeah. <laughs> Mm, virtual hug. <laughs> Not the same, but uh, don't want you to die. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I don't want you to die either. Oh, that means a lot. <laughs> oh, we're supposed to do this? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Or uh, this one, apparently. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Back together. Oh, <laughs> we're <laughs> two <laughs> pieces apart. <laughs> God, it's like Twister. <sighs> Both is always the sage nod. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, madam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I missed you. Yeah, me too. Good. Right, I wasn't sure because you haven't replied to most of my messages. Oh, no, sorry. Like you say, just sick of screens. <laughs> Well, oh, that's made me hungry. Shall we? Yeah. Should we just sit here? Oh, yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just hungry. <laughs> oh. At least the sun came out for a bit. Yeah. Not much has been happening, really, has it, to talk about, other than Corona? Hmm. Uh... Oh, I bought a new frying pan. Wow. What? It's amazing. It's cost me 50 fucking quid. I feel like a proper adult. Congratulations. Thanks. 
I really do love your hair like that. Thank you. You don't seem convinced. Oh, it's gorgeous. I'd kill for those curls. I can't believe you've been straightening it this whole time. No, I know. I wanted to do something really radical with my hair in lockdown too. Like, just shave my head. <laughs> Thought to myself, this is literally the only time in my entire life that I could do that and get away with it. I didn't, obviously. No, so I see. Oh, but I am loving not wearing a bra. <laughs> I've worn one today, obviously. <laughs> but most of lockdown, sisterhood. <laughs> Yeah, you should, you should definitely keep your hair like that. Are you sure you're okay? Mm-hmm. No, come on, spill the tea. It's orange juice. No, I know. I know what I you mean. meant. So... I, what is up? Come on, stop giving me this weird-ass silent treatment. I feel like I'm talking to myself. I don't think you'll want to hear it. What? No, come off it. You can tell me anything. You know that. I've been dreading this. Charming. <laughs> I'm not seeing you. Not... Not exactly. I've been dreading you asking me what's wrong. Why? What's happened? I... OK. I'm really angry at you. Why? What have I done? You're the one that's been really cold, not replying. I gave you some space. I thought... I don't know. I... You didn't send me anything for my birthday. I know. I'm so... I know I didn't. So... I mean, I literally cannot think of what I've done. What is it? What you posted about Black Lives Matter. What? What about it? I mean, I supported it. Of course I supported it. Yeah, on social media. But you didn't think to check in on me. To see how it was affecting me personally. I don't know. How are you? What? Yeah, that's the problem. Think. You didn't think. Colour, Bullshit. Was... You see colour. Well, I'm asking you to see colour. To see my colour of my skin and what that means. To see my hair. Yeah, but it's more than a fashion accessory. Some radical lockdown choice done on a whim. Have you ever considered why I straightened my hair for so long? Because I wanted to fit in. And yes, it was my choice. Because it gave me a better chance of survival. No, you're underthinking it. I can't believe it's taken me so long to play it. So you keep saying, but you're not listening. OK. It felt like... Yes, you shared a hashtag. You posted a black square. You jumped on the bandwagon. Uh, but what changed? What did you actually do? No, rhetorical question. This isn't a bandwagon or a social media trend to me. This is a part of who I am and I need you to see it and I need you to understand. When you shared your support, it felt... Do you know when you spray air freshener after a particularly stinky shit? It's a token gesture for the stench you've left. But it doesn't actually cover it. The stench is still there, 
but all of a sudden it becomes about the air freshener. Well, how considerate. The lovely aroma of roses to pretend your shit don't stink. But the scent actually makes other people think more about the shit that's underneath it. It intensifies it. But we have to pretend it's not there because, you know, roses. And you get to leave the bathroom safe in the knowledge that you've done your bit. Oh, it's not about who did the shit. The shit is the system. The shit is not your fault. We just have to stop pretending it's not there. We, I need you to understand the need for more than air freshener. Yeah, sure. Have you heard of the internet? Google? No, I'm not being glib. I know you're trying, but we... I need you to do better. It's not for me to educate. You know you're right. I'm not black, black, as you say. And please don't understand I'm on... Please don't think that I'm under any illusion that this wouldn't have been ten times harder if I was. You know, I've benefited from my light skin, my white family, my white friends, my fucking Yorkshire accent, my love of David Bowie. <laughs> it's all, it all enabled me to blend in, to hide, to be less other. And I have done. Hidden from that part of me. Because deep down, I knew that it was less seen as less. And I have to face up to that. <laughs> that one half of me is the oppressor of the other half. And that hurts. That guilt hurts. But not feeling guilty, not feeling uncomfortable, it doesn't make the offence go away. It drives it deeper. You know, around the time that you were giving me space and I was being cold or not replying, I was sat in the bath and I looked at the bottles of hair products. So many bottles. And they all, all of them, described my natural hair as something to fix, something to be treated dry, damaged, unmanageable, coarse, frizzy. And in that moment, staring at those bottles, I realised I'd fucking internalised all of it. That's why I've straightened my hair. That's why I'm overly nice to shop assistants. That is why I try not to take up too much space. That's why I don't play the race card. Because I have been so desperate to not be seen as black. Because it's easier. Then I thought about my dad. And about that image of a black man gasping for his last breath. And how I was lucky to have lost my dad to lung cancer. I was lucky. You're right. Uh, it was radical for me to change my hair, but not in the way you mean. This is me reclaiming half of myself, of being proud of it. And it's not about hair. Hair is just a membership card to an easy life. But this moment, this unavoidable movement has stirred something in me. Something ancient, something in my bones. And I have questioned, am I allowed to be this devastated? Am I entitled to feel this heartbroken? I've been gaslighting myself. But no more. I am playing the race card because it's in the hand that I have been dealt. But it's not a trump card, it's calling the dealer out. and I think back over everything I've chosen to ignore, and I am angry. I am so 
angry at myself for not seeing it. When we used to go out and we'd get ready together, you used to offer me a foundation. And in that act of performative obliviousness, you thought that demonstrated your wokeness, your transcendental colour blindness, but actually all it demonstrated was your ignorance. And when you shared that post, when you announced your support, but you didn't do anything real about it, it fucking hurt. Thank you. I know. But, um, you feeling bad, it's a good sign. And it's for you to deal with, not me. No. And not because of Corona. That hug's for you, not me. Let me be angry. Hello everyone, this is Saringard and the Ring of Fire, written by me, Tim Norwood. It's directed by Ben Wilson. Mother is played by Emily Howlett, and Salamander is played by Belle Odawa. The scene is two characters, Salamander and Mother. Salamander is a little fire lizard, dependent on Mother for everything. Mother is an exhausted woman who cares for Salamander. The two are stuck together in a small room and have been for a long time. It seems that they can't stand each other, though there must be more to it than that. We've done our best with what time we've had to integrate our old storytelling to facilitate the piece for visually impaired audience members. This is a rehearsed reading rather than a fully polished performance. We hope you enjoy the show. Bring me my ring of fire, you harlot! I am not your harlot, Salamander. I am your mother. When my lines are written in the script, it says mother. I want my ring of fire! I am tired, Salamander. I am very, very tired. May I have a moment to collect my thoughts? No! Give me my ring of fire. You are a harlot and a charlatan. I love you very much, Salamander. <laughs> I do not love you. Harlot, harlot, harlot. I will burn you alive when I get my ring of fire. My ring of fire, now! When I was your age, I was a model baby. I put my poor mother's health first and I never cried. When I did cry, I soothed myself to sleep. I was a very accomplished soother. If there had been a self-soothing baby competition, I would have won. It's not a competition, Salamander, but if it was, I would be winning. My ring of fire, though. Do you mean your barbecue chicken? Ring of fire, 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 ring of fire. Stop it. You have one job here, and it's not to complain about how many times I complain. I am a tiny baby with no capacity to fend for myself. And I didn't even ask to be born. How dare you imply that I owe you anything? As a wise man, woman, or non-binary person once said, this life is suffering, and this suffering is life. Fortune, true fortune, that is, is for those who have never been born. But who is there that hath true fortune? Whom have you met, or seen, or made that have, have never been born? Amongst the billions that walk this godless, godforsaken earth, not one has had that chance to never be born. Sorry, I wasn't listening. You 
heartless harlot. I am striving to flourish and bloom, and you can not even pay me any attention. I hate you. I am wounded. Sometimes. I love you all the time. You are the first other that I ever knew. What does that mean? Mother is the first other. Floyd, in it. You mean everything to me. Do you know how much it hurts when you say that? All that I meant is that my world is developing at a uh, terribly fast rate. You are my first other, as well as my mother. I love you, but the burgeoning distance between us terrifies me. My world is so much larger than you. You are my world. World, 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 out there. It's not just you and me. It's a pain that has built up over millennia that has reduced my world to you and me. And what's out there seems hardly real. Not that it's relevant to you. But I want to wedge a crowbar into the seal, shut seal of my eyelids. I want to be able to open my eyes to what is out there again. I need to be cared for. I am screaming. Don't make me say that I need to be cared for again. Yeah, it's getting a bit intense, isn't it? Anyway, I hate you. One day, I'll say that I hate you for the first time. And it will break my heart, yeah? It will break your fucking heart. You said you hate me so many times. Oh yeah? The metaphor has broken down. I don't think so. I don't know, my love. I just don't know. It feels like the end of the world. Just every day you need so much time and energy. So much. This is this normal. Is this is dot dot dot. I'm aware that it's normal for people in this situation. You put yourself in this situation. Debatable. You ended up in this situation because of the things that you did. You think it's a fucking road I walked? Fucking fuck. Fuck, I don't want to end up chained in a skull-shaped room with a crybaby crying baby. I'm so... God, Jesus, how Satan, fuck, damn, damn desperate to break out of here. And you are blaming me for ending up here. I just need to be cared for. I need care. I can't care for myself, though. Yeah. Don't just let me cry myself to sleep. I heard about a family that just kept watching TV instead of the baby. I mean, the baby started crying and they just turned the TV up. Didn't want to hear it. And you're evil because you want to do it. I want to be able to... I want to be able to not need to want to turn the TV up. I get the feeling that you're confused. I'm not confused. You what? Dot, 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 question mark. I want... I want to not have to care. I want to be able to just walk out there. Leave me? I could never leave you there. If I didn't exist? See, this is where the metaphor does break down. A baby is a good thing. Its own thing. Using me as a standing for a taxing mind load, load on your mind, too much to think about to keep it together. 
You're not a ball of stress. I hate myself. I hate you too. Sometimes. Without me, better off would you be? That came off a bit Yoda. Can't do anything right. You have been waiting me down for decades. I've been waiting to jettison you for decades. Decades of hoping to sign off, seal off some part of me that can't stop holding on to you. There are hillsides out there, mountains, insert imagery of nature here, chocolate sundays, kinky sex, <laughs> rain, comma, falling, comma, mist like on your skin. <laughs> Do you need a hug? I'm crying. Nap time. On the inside. Nipple. Don't be so crass. I haven't forgiven you for being a harlot. Why are you calling me that? Why do you call me that every day, every day? It's what you are. Do you even know what a harlot is? <laughs> you. I have no energy left for this conversation. You are never going to call me that again. I am done with putting up with your mewling, your name calling. You are tiny and pathetic and I, I have outgrown your pettiness and your hate. I am an eagle and you have clipped my wings for the last time. I am going to soar through the sky and fly to the moon and reach for the stars and land among the gutters and I win and lose and fail and succeed and fail and fail and fail and you are not welcome anymore. Get out. I cast you out. <laughs> I am throwing the salt over my shoulder. I am calling in the exorcist. I am putting you on trial before all the world to see. Your tongue will sit silent forevermore when I am done with you. Let it never be said that I took one more ounce of your bile. Slide yourself into the loamy pit of mud at the bottom of the garden and wallow with the pigs. Pigs who are better than you, for they have never been the albatross around my neck. Compared to you, pigs are saints and I am a god. And for the love of all this, I command you to silence. Harlot. What do you want? You never brought me my ring of fire. Fine. Here you go. At last, I have waited seven years. 7,000 years to hold my ring of fire. There, there, baby. There, there. Mother is here to be there for you. Are you going to throw salt on me now? I am done for the day. Come back tomorrow. What happened to you to make you like this? I suppose it might be that my mother never showed me any affection, but that's probably it. Grandma? Yes. That bitch? Oh, she was probably also traumatised by her mother. I don't know. She died before I was born. That bitch? Why can't you just ask nicely when you need something, Salamander? Why must we always go through an ordeal when you need something, Salamander? You ignored me when I said please. I said please for a period of ten years. Give or take. Oh. Do 
maybe you like Jesus? No, I don't think so. It's going to be okay. No, I don't think so. I'm sorry. No, I don't think so. Me neither. I meant it when I said I loved you. I don't understand. It makes me happy to spend time with you and take care of you. I don't get it. I'm not sure if it's true. Maybe, maybe this is one of those fish bicycle moments. You do need love. You might not understand it though. Maybe this isn't one of those fish bicycle moments. It's raining outside. That means that this is a sad scene. Don't think I haven't noticed that you're making an effort. You and I may forever be at loggerheads, but I have noticed that you are making an effort. It's a very clinical approach to a wound of the heart. It's childish to cry about those things. You're getting grumpy again. I suppose I've just learnt dot, dot, dot. Go on. It's a bit on the nose. I've just learnt what's been done to me. That's not my fault. I didn't do that to you. Like a sponge, you soaked up everything that was said to you. I did. And you began saying it to yourself. I did. And you decided that this was normal. I did. Exciting. Very. I also didn't choose to be like this. To be this or this way. <laughs> Is that an alleged apology? Apologising to oneself is a mark of madness. Might be nice there. I apologise to you. That was nice. We're stuck. I've been stuck for as long as I've been alive. I can't believe it's not butter. Stop saying that. There's no point in dwelling on it, though. <sighs> what am I supposed to do? You are an umpty. I am part of you. I do not know any more than you do. You're an idiot, then. <sighs> not helping. I know. I do love you. I know. Ma? Wakey, wakey, Ma. Not time to sleep, Ma. Ma, look. Ma, see. We did this in RE. 
I wrote four pages, see? I never write four pages. But I did, Ma. This time I did. Ma, come on. You're boring me, Ma. Wish you were more like Sammy Lee's Ma. She bakes ginger biscuits. So hot you have to... <laughs> and then glug a full glass of juice after. But they're tasty. Why don't you bake, Ma? Ma, can we bake, please? Come on. I've put my bag away and my shoes in the shoes place. Please, Ma. I know you're tired, Ma, but please. <sighs> Why are you always tired, Ma? Is it because Daddy snores so? No, because even when Daddy sleeps in the car, you're still tired then. Always tired for me. You're never tired when Daddy wants to play. Never too tired for his kiss chase. You always play tag, and he's always it, and you run and run. What if I play tag like Dad does, Ma? What then? Come on, Ma. Wake up. Wake up. Ma? I think I'm bleeding, Ma. My hand, it's bleeding, Ma. It's bleeding, Ma. It's... It's you, Ma. Stop sleeping now, Ma. You can't sleep now, Ma. You're... There's blood. Please, Ma. Please. Ma! Sat in the library after school. I know I'm screwed, but I didn't start on you. I wait up there, hide up the stairs. Maybe you'll get bored and leave me there. It's not fair. I don't know what I did wrong, but for some reason, I'm today's target. The rumor's gone round the so-called playground where no one's ever played. People just get brayed every day. The same and the same. Some days I think about fighting back instead of hiding behind the non-fiction racks. I play the scene over, consider my options. Hit and run, duck and dive, battered but alive. Will you stop if I survive? I toy with the idea of making it clear that you can't bring me down for the rest of the year. But I know I can't take you. And I wouldn't like to try. I just wish I had someone bigger on my side. Fuck, I could cry, but I won't. Crump, crump, crump. I pick up a gun as I stagger through the hum of the silence, post bomb. My ears are ringing. My feet are stinging. I think I hear singing. Or is it screaming? The stones underfoot are rough to touch and they crunch and crumble like our bodies do under the great footprint of war. I've been here before. The scene is not new. The wails, the yells may seem alien to you, but to me, they are home. My comfort zone. It's all I've known. When footage of me flashes on screens of Europeans, they feel a punch of pain in their hearts for a second. And in that second, have thought a thousand thoughts, made plans, took action. For a second lasts a lifetime when you're trying to make it out alive. I'm five. My plan for survival is simple, effective. Move quick, be silent and don't get settled. Learn every trade, soldier, mother, thief, and don't trust anyone, no matter what they believe. Stay under the radar, and nobody navigating no man's land. Duck, dodge, and dive. Find a safe place to hide. I'm still only five, and I... Hush, wait, pause. Still, dead still, silent thought, shallow breath, still, not an inch, not a muscle, still, hold, just hold, your nerve, their fire, hold, and wait, wait. It's okay, Ma. It'll fade, Ma. It'll wipe away, Ma, I promise. It always mends. You just need to wrap it in a hug. I broke my wrist, remember? 
on the bumps in the park, and they put on the pot. And when it was going on, it got warm, too hot. But you said the pot is like a hug, Ma, and the hug will make it better. And sometimes hugs can be hot and sticky, but they fix them things that are broken, Ma. They do. So I can fix you, can't I, Ma? With a hug. He doesn't mean it, Ma. It's just the way he plays. And sometimes it's rough, but he plays the same with me, and it only hurts if I think it does. If I think hard enough, I can make the ouch go away. So it's just a game. Let's play a game now, Ma. Let's play families. But I'll be you, and you be me, asleep. And I'll make the tea, toast with cheese. And then I'll wave to Mrs. Addison and complain about the weather. Always rain, always rain. Mrs. Addison can play doctor if we want her to, if you let her. Mrs. Addison always wants to come inside and see the wallpaper. She tells me so. She says you won't let her, but she'll play a good doctor, don't you think, Ma? Or not, if you don't want. I can play teacher. I'll be Mr. Barton in art. Oh dear, what a mess. Let's get this cleaned up before the bell goes. Let's get you cleaned up before the bell goes, Ma. It'll clean up just nice, Ma, you'll see. It'll fade, Ma. It'll wipe away, Ma, I promise. I promise I'll be good, Ma. I'll try, always. I just don't want to fight. Is that a lot to ask? Pick your games with someone else. I ain't up to the task. There's no glory in getting gory. It's not the end of my story. So I'll stay with the books. I won't try my luck, but you won't give a fuck. You'll be back the next day to scare me away. But not today. Not today. Today, my shield is page upon page of hardbacks documenting human rage in World War I, then World War II, then Falklands, Vietnam, civil and cold. It never gets old. The anger, the fear. And it's the same right here, but bullets are bricks. Trenches are terrapins. And the end of lunch bell is the white flag I wait for, I long for, in 32 minutes. Just 32 minutes, just 1,920 seconds ticking by as I hide and read, read, read. The moment will pass, wait. Trust it will pass, wait. The moment of pause, hold, slamming doors, still, soldiers shout, still, friend or foe, hush, hush, I'll never know, hold, and then it comes, dumb, dumb, no longer the drum, but the tagger, 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 scramble, stumble, stagger, stagger, clashing, clawing, run one by one, down they bow. My time is now clocked in a cloud of smoke, they shock. I don't, I weave, I see, not clear, but enough to find my way to, to, to a door. What's left of a room, a sanctuary, I hope, unoccupied, I hope, a shelter, hello. <sighs> Trace the walls one and another, four sides of cold stone, brittle stone. I think I'm alone for now, for a second. Breathe, sit, slam, solid floor, back supported by stone. Legs can no longer run, but rest, rest. Close my eyes, longer than a blink. Don't try to think, for now, rest. I'll be strong, Ma. You'll see. I'll be strong like Daddy. And I won't be scared. And I won't run and hide. I'll grow tall, Ma. And strong, Ma. And I won't play Daddy's games. Not anymore. Not when they're not fun. I love you, Ma. But I won't grow up like you. I won't take it like you. Not if I don't want to. I won't let Daddy always be it or anyone. I will be it if I want to, Ma. I promise. Don't worry, Ma. You can rest, Ma. I'll be fine. I could suit up. 
I could, like they did in the books. With tanks and tactics and Trojan horses, their fists couldn't win, so they fought their way in with their minds behind enemy lines. To outsmart the foe, you've got to know the foe. Understand the task in hand, clever, well-planned. That's how the big boys do it. That's how they sit on horses or in offices, point at a map, then slap the back of the poor twat who does their dirty work so the suit stays clean and the reputation pristine. That could be me. It could, if I understood my foe. So what do I know? I hear what the teachers say, how your dad's locked away and your mum's, well, and that it makes you angsty, troubled, a pity kid, a problem case, and they all do that face, the one that I hate, that says they know you're a dick, and they're sorry you're a dick, but they don't want to do out in case you might flip, or they tip you over the edge, and that's it. Poor, poor, troubled kid with your bin bag of things, and your mum's ring dangling round your grey, veiny neck. Let's see what tomorrow brings, shall we? Shall we? Today is just another day. Like the last one, and the one before that. And tomorrow won't change. Always the same, try not to die. I've lived a thousand lives, but I'm still only five. To most, I am just a number, a fact or a figure, a statistic to ponder, a faraway thought. But you'll never know the battles of thought, my day-to-day -day struggle just to continue being living, surviving. My hopes, my dreams are different to yours. Mine are for silence and undisturbed thought. Do not have to watch my back or scout a half-destroyed building for the next pile of rubble that I'll make my home in. I hope I hold on to that I'll just survive long enough to have a proper cry. I am five. I'm one in seven, or so they say. One in five, or one in four, they can't be sure. One in 415 million is the latest, they think. But I'm still just the one. The lost one. The lonely one. And the loneliness never leaves. I never forget the scenes of that place I called home. In every place I roam, I'm still alone. Still scared. Still hear the taga taga. Still hear the silence. Still watch the seconds tick by. But now I'm older. Tougher. Wiser. A father. A soldier. A decision maker. But I'm still just the one. The one in a number. An incomprehensible, meaningless number. The one. Drum, drum. And, and what about the issue, and, and I've got to raise it, of personal responsibility here. We've got two 16-year-olds getting into a boat, one of them who can't swim. Uh, I mean, it underlines, obviously, how desperate they are, but, but, but there has to be an element of personal responsibility here, doesn't there? I think we have to remember that we're talking about children, children who very likely don't have any adults with them and are more than likely trying to reach family and friends in the UK. Just earlier this year, the government closed down a route for unaccompanied asylum-seeking children to enter the UK. That means that they're stuck in France with absolutely no way to get to their loved ones and to get to safety. Now, you only get into a boat if you are very, very desperate. And I think at that point, personal responsibility, you know, it, it, it isn't relevant anymore and actually the responsibility is with the British government and with the French authorities who need to ensure that that kind of person can get here safely and get on with their lives rather than dying in a boat. And the thing is, I don't actually think he did it, but he's been put in prison. I mean, it's a right palaver cop. Basically, he's so simple, bless his cottons, and so is his nephew, that essentially the police take them both for numpties and they frame them. Yeah. Yeah, and this isn't even the first time 
that's the craziest thing. The police have been after this chap for yonks trying to pin something on him because he's got loads of fiddly little crimes, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he was wrongly convicted and he got a load of money from that off the police or the, the government or something. Aye. And so they are trying to pin the knocking off of this poor girl on him. Yeah. Yeah, and they've done loads of stuff. I mean, they've got her blood in his car and they've even binned evidence that could defend him. Oh, no. Yeah, and the worst thing is they've basically told the kiddie, you know, this poor lad who's a few wands short of a Tinkerbell, bless him, but he tried. <laughs> no, no, they have basically told him what to say as a confession on tape. And he hasn't even done anything. Brandon. And it's actually been proved that this kid is not playing with the full deck. And yet they still want to try. Hang on a minute. Have you seen it? Hmm? That's the first season, isn't it? You have seen it. It's so sad seeing him get duped. But it is the best bit, isn't it? <laughs> well, why didn't you say you'd seen it? Oh, I'm sorry. Everyone's seen Making a Murderer. Have they? Oh, yeah, it's one of the first big ones. Yeah, well, you should have said. Mm, sorry, it's hard to keep track. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's so many, isn't there? So many, and they change all the time. Well, you certainly know your stuff. <laughs> oh, um, does Curly Pete have chutney? Yeah. Nanny? Yes. Now, oh. yeah, yes, yes. Oh. Um, Curly Pete, in fact, does he even still come along? Oh, I'm sorry, my Zoom went skew with. You froze. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, Curly Pete, he said something about finding a new food bank last week, didn't he? Yeah, that's because he doesn't like chutney. But oh. otherwise, he still comes Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, like us. Right. No chutney then. Just ham and cheese. I can't believe you let me waffle on about that programme. I'll let you waffle on because it's nice. <laughs> nice. What's it are you engrossed? Oh, well, it's nice of you to set it up. You're welcome. No one's looking down with that Netflix. Can you imagine? <laughs> I'm watching that Step Up 2. Uh huh. Dreeps tonight. Well, that's a banger. <laughs> so I've heard. Oh, um, I thought of you the other day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that mask you made. Oh, here we go. Yeah. No, 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 no. I thought yeah, yours go was... Go on, go on, go on. Forceful. Yeah, give up. <laughs> well, right, I was on my exercise the other day, oh, right? Oh, did you do what I told you? What was that? What Bev does. Uh, oh, oh, no, not this again. I, oh. It works you harder, apparently. Running backwards. Yes. Mm. I just... No, I, 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 I'll try it at some point. I promise. I just, I, did, I ran forwards past the Tesco basically out on Infirmary Road. And there's this, there's this bloke, right? And he gets out of his car. He sort of goes around to the booth, gets his reusables and everything. Then goes around to the passenger side, right? And he grabs a shoe. One shoe. One shoe. And he gets it like, and he sort of like brushes it down, makes it look nice and everything. Oh, so you were watching him for a while then. What? Was it ran past? Well, yeah, well, yeah. Anyway, he gets he gets the shoe right, and he locks his car, takes the shoe, and he puts it on his face and ties the lace around the back of his head. You what? And I thought of you. Oh, did you? Lovely. Oh, you should try it. It might be a bit more pleasant than those pants you made your mask out of. They weren't used. Oh, oh, really? They really? hadn't even been taken out of their box. Hmm. Brand new they were. Unopened. Oh, sorry, Nell, it just made me giggle. No, ah, no, 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 don't, don't worry. It will only be what everyone else will have been thinking who saw me. <laughs> only I knew that they were brand new. Mm. Everyone else will have just wondered who that weird woman was using a pair of Y fronts for a month. <laughs> and if it gave them something to giggle and talk about to their friends on their weekly Zoom. 
then I'm happy. Mm. Anyway, how are you getting on? Uh, last one. How about you? I'm done then. I'm a factory line. Oh, okay. Well, let me just bag this one then. And then I'll call yours out and check we've got everyone who'll likely be coming tonight. Nice and tidy. Bag of Seabrook. Are you ready? Hang on. Right. Okay. Right. Call away. Okay. Um, Jiffy. Jiffy. Go. Oh, um, Susan. Yeah. Doesn't she call herself Mary? Oh, I think she alternates. Oh, fair enough. Go. Uh, Kinky Bruce. Oh, Kinky Bruce, Scott. Oh, um, Heisenberg and Heisenberg. Yeah, go. Wasn't he quantum physics? Um, yeah, probably. And a character in Breaking Bad who looks like the guy. Anyway, your go. Okay. Curly Pete, no chutney. We like him. Yep. yep. Brian May. <laughs> yep. Now, how he maintains that hair while sleeping rough is beyond me. I mean, but oh, bless him. Um, the Colonel. Oh, uh, got. <laughs> oh, Julie. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right then, come on, thrill. Uh, and you're bringing the flasks today, aren't you? Yeah, and masks, please. Oh, no, you say every time. Yes, please. Don't sink down in your chair because mm. I often see you slip it into your pocket. Because we're outside mostly and I shouldn't have to cover up this beautiful face. Mm. <laughs> Just wear it. And someday we may even be able to give each other a hug. Oh, oh my. <laughs> Where are you going? Oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh, like, one. yeah. Like, like, like this now, mm. just, just like, yeah. like the mask. Yeah. You cheeky yeah. it. Go. Go. I'm oh, go. Yeah. What? Oh, it's called um, Max Factor Moisture Kiss. Do you like it? Well, I know I'll be wearing it beneath my mask, and that's all that matters is that I feel good, isn't it? I... A Zoom call, actually. Yeah, with her. Yeah, because she's sound. Hmm? Oh, 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 it's just as though you won't be seen really then. Hmm? <sighs> oh, you're, you're here. Sorry, I was, um, I was uh, just, I was just on the phone. <laughs> oh. Hi, it's okay. So, sorry I'm late. Oh. Wow. You look amazing. Mm. Stunning. Mm. Stunning, you really do. Oh. You put me in my slippers to shame. <laughs> Thank you. And thank you for coming on. Oh, it's always lovely to see you, however brief. Mm. Well, oh, you, you're not dressed to kill for me, are you? You're not, not wasting no. that vision <laughs> on me in my slippers, are you? <laughs> no, although it wouldn't be a waste because you deserve to be spoiled once in a while. and. <laughs> Now we're we're doing the um the socially distanced quiz at the dock. We've got a table and everything. Oh, you lucky lot! I um 
I just wanted to ask you, um, before I went, how do I look? You look like you. And I wouldn't change a thing. Now, <clears throat> bugger off and have a double vodka for me. Oh, hi. <laughs> well, uh, oh maybe you should come for one. Oh, God, oh, I'd love to. But mm. maybe when this is all over. Mm, maybe. Oh, what, you're not going to try and charm me down there, then? Well, I don't want to risk that, Nell. Oh, oh, you know. <laughs> right, well, I, I have got to go. So, um... Oh, hmm? I hope you win. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> right, well... Bye then. Oh, bye. Hi. I can't hear you. No. <laughs> I can't hear you. Shit, sorry, <laughs> no. <laughs> I haven't done is I how are you? You look amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't make everything out of Y fronts. Oh, you made that dress. Mm, I wasn't too bad in my day. Oh, that's insane. No, I, I still make the odd thing, but you know, not much. Oh, well, you're beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always knew you were beautiful, but you're, you're beautiful. Sorry. I bit full on <laughs> this I think I just crave some beauty at the moment you know I'm just... well bless you cop and you don't need to apologize there's no full-on with me you know <laughs> oh, I guess it's all gone a bit gray How have you been it's been a while well, since I saw your face. I'm, um, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I'm busy. Oh, which is... good. That's good. You mean seeing more of the pub then? Well, um, I'm, I'm working. Well, behind the bar. Oh, that's perfect for you, life and soul. Helping my mum. Um, just admin for the business, possibly following her footsteps, you know, it's what's best. Right. That's good. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, it's been so long since we did this. Mm. Text messages aren't the same. I'm, I'm really sorry. I, I have been really shit at communication. I... No, 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 no. You've been busy and you've got places to go now and people to see. I suppose. <laughs> But I did this for a reason. I don't get dressed up on my Sunday best on a Tuesday evening for no reason. Oh, well, I am worth the outfit, Nell, and it's made my day. Well, you absolutely are. <laughs> uh, but listen, you were the first person I thought of. You know that the sandwiches have somewhat wound up. Yeah. Well, I don't pop down there as much anymore as there's... There's less to do with the easing and all that stuff. Oh, I miss it. Oh, me too. Well, <clears throat> um, I had a letter from the people who run the group. And it contained another letter. Okay. And I'd really like to read it to you. Well, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, hmm. Dear Nell, 
I feel like the ink is drying in my pen as there's so much to say, but I don't know how to say it. So I'll keep it simple. The day I walked out on you was the day I made my biggest mistake. And since then, I haven't known how to repair it. But knowing what you're like and the caring, wonderful person you are inside, led me to find where I could be close to you without being too close to hurt you anymore. Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. I walked away from the woman who gave me everything. I walked away on my birthday. I went downhill. And it's all because I couldn't handle what I had because I wasn't right. And I spiraled after I walked out and I deserve that. I hope you get this. And I hope you'll know where you can find me if you are ever ready. And maybe then I can open the presents you got me and we can start again where we left off. Oh, my love, my darling. Len. Oh, Nell. Oh, fuck. He's been around this whole time. What are you going to do? Well, that's why I'm here, to ask you that question. I know that you'll know what to do. Oh, Nell. Well, what did your gut say? Like, what's inside? That's what I knew you would say. And, and my gut says that I should go and see him. But he walked out on me. I mean, sometimes we do things we regret. Nell, to, to people we love and I mean it sounds like he knew that pretty soon on but he didn't know how to make it right mm. no but this has to be on your terms Nell it has to be your decision this it has to come from you I, I made him a sandwich <laughs> and I'm gonna take it down there for the evening shift if you're sure, then... What's inside me? So those unopened Y fronts? Yeah, yeah, yes. They those were... ones you made your mask with? Yes. <laughs> well, you better rewrap them then. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I need you to come with me. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Of course. No, I'll be right beside you. Right beside you. <laughs> yeah. You've got 20 minutes. See you there. Can't sleep, baby. There, there, baby. Try. Let's try sleeping with the light on. I know we don't like to, without meaning to. Brings out the shadows, doesn't it? I suppose you want a story. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a little girl and she was walking, no, she was skipping 
skipping on a dusty path which winded through the woods. The girl was very brave and she was very ambitious. She had a red dress on. No, was it green? Yeah, that feels better. She had a green dress on. She wanted to explore. She'd not been in these woods before. She wanted to look at the moss, find 10 different types of leaves, meet butterflies, fairies, and climb in the trees. Sleeping with the light on? Because, well, we tell ourselves we don't really need to, but really, you just dim it. You still leave room for that comfort. Maybe it's all about comfort. I don't know if that's what you're going for. Maybe it is. Maybe you're just looking for that comfort. But how does she? Like, if everything doesn't feel safe, then is everything a threat? Where are you? And if everything's perceived as a threat, then how does she behave? Is everything okay? How does she, not just an immediate danger, a threat? Maybe she's learnt about windows and locking doors and checking. Sorry, baby, I drifted. So yeah, she was exploring and it had been quite a long time. She noticed that the shadows were getting a little bigger and looked a little darker. She tried to retrace her steps thinking it had been such a long time. When suddenly she became quite disorientated. She knew she was lost. She knew she was lost because she didn't recognize her path anymore. Do you want a drink? You know, a long, long time ago, there was a perfect place. A perfect place with rolling hills, willowing trees, soft grass, and heather tickling at the knees. I'll always miss that place and what it could have been. But there'll always be that sense of, oh, I've retreated. Back to a comfort, back to why I'm here. But there'll always be a sense of that feeling a change again. I feel like I want a change. Baby, beautiful, precious, angel, darling. She was lost, hopelessly lost. The woods that had once been so exciting and inviting had become an impossible maze. She scurried and searched, frantically clambering through the undergrowth, hoping to find a way out. When suddenly, she came upon an assembly of birds. There were crows and cuckoos, blackbirds, herons, robins and jays, and a big wise owl addressing the flock. There amongst the leaves, the lost girl found a mysterious green court and they were trialing a trickster. What if I stayed and kept quiet and worked really, really hard and showed him I could do it, I could do it and do it better and prove that I could do what I was told was unrealistic? I've made you some tea. I can do what I was told I cannot do. What if you can do that too? Would it change the situation? Would it go back to the way things were? There were good times, baby. The woods, the pumpkins, the bath, blissed out in the bubble with orange leaves, no curtain, cool sounds, cold water, crisp sandwiches, salt on the floor, friends at the door. I've put some sugar in. I thought it might help. Not saying a word. Not saying a word. 
but being completely and utterly there. How could it be that she was tricked? Lured and muddled, confused and befuddled. She was under the impression she was exploring of her own volition and whim. Thus was the mess of the woods. Tangled branches, twigs snapping from each and every angle. Howls and hoots and tweets and growls snarling from the shadows. What do you think? I'm trying. I'm just not sure if I'm doing it right. I feel an overwhelming sense of dread. It's hard to accept that it's work when I don't feel that sense of dread. It's hard to accept that it's love when I don't feel that sense of dread. When I'm not being told what to do. When I'm not hating every second. When I'm not trapped. Stuck. When I'm in control, I'm out of control. Baby, sweetie, honey, gorgeous, love. Tears. Oh, I don't think of it, baby. The squealing, shaking of a piglet fitting and dying in pain in its own filth. Tears. A shock. Anger again. Quickly, calm, quick. A sunset. Sorry, baby. I drifted again. So the lost girl watched as the trickster was sentenced for playing too many cruel games in the woods. Shh, baby. Yeah. So she greeted the birds and found of a spell. And the wise owl said to her, with determination, focus and drive, you're bound to escape the woods alive. So she worked with the birds and learnt she needed to rise above it. Rise above it, baby. Birds have wings to raise you up and you'll find your way out. So long as you want it. And that's always the story, baby. Is it okay? I really am just trying to help. Into the end. Standing on the edge. Staring into the future at the muted place. Looking up. Out. No life. No light. No sound. That's everything. Limitless. Formless and abundant in spirit. This time is pregnant. Finally grateful for life. Finally streaming tears of joy. This world is a beautiful place. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry, baby. So the lost girl found her way out. Of course she did. She worked with the birds, as she always would and always will. No one said anything about it being easy, baby. But she finds peace. She finds peace. And that's a good thing, baby. I never know what's going on with you. I'll tell you, baby. You'll do whatever you need to do. I love you, baby. There, there, baby. Just make sure to look that monster in the eye. Sweet dreams.